The topic of discussion for today's session is the anatomy of the pancreas as well as its clinical importance. Pancreas is an elongated accessory digestive gland that lies on the posterior abdominal wall. It lies in the epigastric, umbilical as well as left hypochondriac regions at the level of L1 and L2 vertebra. It is an exoendocrine gland. It produces exocrine secretions that is the pancreatic juice from the acinar cells. These secretions enter into the second part of the duodenum where the duct which is present called as the main pancreatic duct along with its accessory pancreatic duct secrete these secretions which help in the digestion of macromolecules such as lipids, carbohydrates and proteins. And also it has an endocrine activity. The endocrine secretions like glucagon, insulin, somatostatin were secreted directly into the bloodstream and helps mainly in maintaining the glucose homeostasis which take part in the metabolic processes. If you see the shape of the pancreas, it is of J-shaped or retort shaped and bowl of the retort represents head of the pancreas and stem of the retort represents the neck, body as well as tail of the pancreas. So here if you talk about the measurements of the pancreas, it is of approximately 12 to 15 centimeters in length and the width is 3 to 4 centimeters and the thickness is approximately 1.5 to 2 centimeters and the weight is 80 to 90 grams. Now the pancreas has been divided into various parts for uh, better understanding. So here first is the head, next is the neck, body and tail. These are the four parts of the pancreas. Now first is the head of the pancreas. It is elongated and disc shaped and it is flattened at the right end of the pancreas. So it lies in the concavity of the C-shaped duodenal loop at the level of L2 vertebra. So what are the external features of the head? The head of the pancreas has three borders. It has superior, inferior and the lateral. It has totally three borders and it has two surfaces. One is anterior and next is the posterior. So it has three borders, two surfaces as well as one process called as uncinate process which comes from the head of the pancreas. So what are the relations of the pancreas? So when we talk about the relations of the pancreas, the superior border is related to the first part of the duodenum and uh, superior pancreatico duodenal artery. Next is the inferior border. The inferior border is related to the third part of the duodenum and inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. And next is the right border which is also called as a lateral border which is related to the second part of the duodenum and also the anastomotic channels between the two pancreatico duodenal arteries. And next are the surfaces. The anterior surface is related with the following structures from above to below. They are the first part of the duodenum. Next is the transverse colon, root of the transverse mesocolon and the jejunum. And next is the posterior surface of the head of the pancreas. The posterior surface is mainly related to the inferior vena cava, left renal vein, bile duct, as well as the right crest of the diaphragm. And next, if you see the uncinate process, which is projected from the head of the pancreas, is mainly related to anteriorly with the superior mesenteric vessels and posteriorly to the abdominal iota. So this is what you need to know about the relations of the head of the pancreas. And next is the neck. It is slightly constricted part of the gland and is located or situated between the head as well as the body. And it is 2.5 centimeters long and it is directed upwards and towards left. So what are the external features? The neck of the pancreas has totally two surfaces that is anterior and posterior and it has two borders that is upper as well as lower or we can say superior or inferior border. So the anterior surface is related to the pylorus. The posterior surface is related to the termination of superior mesenteric vein 
and beginning of the portal vein. The upper border is related to the first part of the duodenum and the lower border is related to the root of the transverse mesocolon. And after the neck, next is the body of the pancreas. It is the elongated part of the pancreas which is extending from the neck to the tail. It lies to the left of the superior mesenteric vessels, passing over the iota as well as L2 vertebra. So what are the external features of this gland? If you see the cross section of the body, it is triangular in shape. So that's the reason it has totally three borders. That is anterior, superior and inferior. And it has three surfaces. That is uh, anterior, posterior and inferior. And one process which is called as tuber omentale. The tuber omentale is the projection from the part of the body above the lesser curvature of the stomach. And the next are the relations of the body of the pancreas. So the anterior border which gives attachment to the root of the transverse mesocolon and the superior border is related to the celiac artery that is above tuber omentale and also the hepatic artery which is right of the tuber omentale and the splenic artery which is related to the left of the tuber omentale. And next is the inferior border. The inferior border is related to the superior mesenteric vessels. This is what you need to know about the relation with respect to that of borders. Next are the surfaces. The anterior surface which is concave and directed forwards and upwards and it is related to lesser sac as well as stomach. And next one is the posterior surface which is devoid of peritoneum and it is related to the iota and the origin of the superior mesenteric artery left crust of the diaphragm as well as the left suprarenal gland, left kidney, left renal vessels and the splenic vein. And next is the inferior surface. The inferior surface is covered by the peritoneum and the posterior surface is not covered by the peritoneum. So the inferior surface is related to the duodenojejunal flexure, coils of jejunum. So this is what you need to know about uh, the body of the pancreas and next one is the tail. The tail is the narrow left end of the pancreas that lies in the linorenal ligament along with the splenic vessels. The tail contains large number of islets of Langer hands per unit tissue when compared to that of other parts of the pancreas. Now, this part is mainly related to the visceral surface of the spleen between gastric impression and the colic impression. So, this is what you need to know about uh, the head, neck, body as well as tail of the pancreas. Next is the ducts of the pancreas. So the pancreas has two ducts. One is the main pancreatic duct and another one is the accessory pancreatic duct. So these two ducts drain the exocrine secretions into the second part of the duodenum. First one is the main pancreatic duct. It is also called as the duct of Wilson. It begins in the tail and travel along the whole length of the gland near its posterior surface. It is approximately 3 mm in diameter and here the main pancreatic duct receives small tributaries at acute angles throughout its length. It pierces the duodenal wall by joining the bile duct to form hepatopancreatic ampulla which is also called as ampulla of water which opens into the descending part which is the second part of the duodenum that is at the apex of the major duodenal papilla which is 8 to 10 centimeters distal to the top pylorus, what we studied in the module of duodenum. Here, the smooth muscle sphincters, that is the sphincter of the pancreatic duct, which is located around the terminal part of the pancreatic duct. And also there is a separate sphincter for the bile duct too, that is the sphincter of the bile duct, which is located around the terminal aspect of the bile duct. And also there is a common sphincter for both the bile as well as pancreatic duct which is called as the hepatopancreatic sphincter which is called as the sphincter of Odi and which opens around the hepatopancreatic ampulla and controls the flow of the bile as well as pancreatic juice into the ampulla and prevents the reflex of the duodenal content into the ampulla. This is what you need to know about the main pancreatic duct. Next one is the accessory pancreatic duct. So here, it begins in the lower part of the head 
and it runs upwards and medially and opens into the second part of the duodenum at the tip of the minor duodenal papilla that is 2 to 3 cm above the opening of main pancreatic duct or 6 to 8 cm distal to that of pylorus. So usually the accessory duct communicates with the main pancreatic duct but in some cases the main pancreatic duct is smaller than the accessory pancreatic duct that is the reason it cannot be connected. In such cases the accessory duct carries most of the pancreatic juice. So this is what you need to know about uh, the anatomical aspects of the pancreas. Now let us talk about the neurovascular structures which are supplying the pancreas and the first one is the arterial supply. So pancreas is highly vascular structure and supplied by the following arteries. One is the splenic artery which is the branch of celiac artery. It is the main source of the blood supply to the body as well as tail of the pancreas. As many as 10 branches may pass from the splenic artery to the body as well as the tail of the pancreas. And also there is one large branch known as arteriopancreatica magna which arises near the tail of the pancreas and runs towards the neck. And there are other small branches. We can say one small branch which is known as uh, arteria cauda pancreatica which runs towards the tip of the tail of the pancreas. And the next one is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery which is the branch of gastro duodenal artery. And another artery which is the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which is the branch of superior mesenteric artery. So this is what you need to know about uh, the blood supply of the pancreas. Now let us talk about the venous drainage of the pancreas. Pancreas drains into portal vein, superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. So what is the lymphatic drainage? The pancreatic lymph vessels follow the arteries. So most of the pancreatic lymph vessels end in the pancreatico splenic lymph nodes which lie along the splenic artery. So here some vessels end in the pyloric lymph nodes and the efferent vessels from these nodes drain the superior mesenteric lymph nodes or the celiac lymph nodes. And this is what you need to know about uh, the lymphatic drainage of the pancreas and next is the nerve supply of the pancreas. The sympathetic supply is from splanchnic nerves which are vasomotor in nature and the parasympathetic supply is from vagus nerve which controls the pancreatic secretions and uh, these pancreatic secretions are also influenced by the hormone cholecystokinin which is produced by the cells of the duodenal epithelium. So this is what you need to know about uh, the nerve supply of the pancreas. The next is histology of the pancreas. We will study histology under two headings. One is the exocrine part and another one is the endocrine part. So first is exocrine part of the pancreas. It is made up of tubular asinine lined by the pyramidal cells with the basal round nuclei containing zymogen granules. So the exocrine part of the pancreas secrete digestive pancreatic juices which contains the digestive enzymes such as trypsin which breaks proteins into lower polypeptides, amylase hydrolyzes starch as well as glycogen into disaccharides and lipase which breaks fat into fatty acids and glycerol. And next is the endocrine part of the pancreas. Endocrine part is made up of islets of Langerhans which are small isolated mass of cells. These cells are distributed throughout the pancreas with more numerous in tail. And most important type of cells which are mainly seen in the islets are beta cells approximately 80% which are granular, basophilic and produce insulin which mainly helps in utilization of sugar by the cells. And other type of cells if you see are seen in the islets that is alpha cells 20% which are granular and acidophilic in nature and uh, it has subtypes of A1 as well as A2. A1 cells belong to the enterochromaffin group which secrete the pancreatic gastrin and A2 cells secrete glucagon. And next is the somatostatin. The somatostatin is the other type of hormone we will study in the endocrine physiology in detail. Now let us talk about the development of the pancreas. So if you see the development of the pancreas, the pancreas is developed from two separate birds, dorsal bird and the ventral bud. 
So the larger dorsal bud, if you see, it arises proximally directly from the duodenum and forms part of the head and also whole of the neck, body and tail of the pancreas. So the duct of the dorsal pancreatic bird forms the main pancreatic duct with the duct of ventral bird. The part of the duct of dorsal pancreatic duct forms accessory pancreatic duct. Now next is the smaller ventral bud. The smaller ventral bud arises in common with the hepatic bud of the liver and forms uncinate process and inferior part of the head of the pancreas. The duct of the ventral bud opens into the duct of the dorsal pancreatic bud near its neck and forms the main pancreatic duct which opens into the duodenum. So this is what you need to know about uh, the developmental aspects of the pancreas and next is the clinical anatomy. In the clinical anatomy, an important uh, condition associated with the pancreas is pancreatitis, which is the inflammation of the pancreas. The etiology for the inflammation of the pancreas is mainly because of the presence of uh, gallstones as well as alcohol consumption. The symptoms include upper abdominal pain that is epigastric pain which may be severe as well as uh, constant and may reach to the back or radiate to the back. And the symptoms include nausea, vomiting, weight loss, fatty stools, mild jaundice, diabetes, low BP, heart failure as well as kidney failure. These are all the signs and symptoms of acute pancreatitis. Next is the diabetes mellitus. The diabetes mellitus is characterized by the hyperglycemia that is caused by inadequate production of the insulin or inadequate action of the insulin on the body tissues. The types are as follows, type 1 diabetes which is also known as the insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. The type 2 diabetes which results from the insulin resistance of target tissues. A condition in which the body fails to properly utilize the insulin or fails to respond properly to the insulin action. And these are the signs and symptoms of the diabetes mellitus. Polyuria, excessive secretion of urine, polydipsia, thirst, excessive loss of uh, weight and uh, tightness can be seen that is fatigue, lethargy and more commonly the infections are associated with the urinary tract as well as blurring of the vision mainly because of uh, involvement of uh, metabolites uh, in the formation of the cataract. And the next is the annular pancreas. It is the developmental anomaly in which second part of the duodenum is encircled by a ring of pancreatic tissue. And uh, what is the accessory pancreatic tissue? It is a rare condition in which small group of pancreatic cells separate from the pancreas. It may be found in the duodenum which can be considered as the most common site for the accessory pancreatic tissue to be located. And uh, other sites may be stomach, small intestine, Meckel's diverticulum, great romentum and hilum of the spleen. But the most common location is the duodenum. So they usually single yellowish lobulated nodules which contain islets of Langerhans. So this is what you need to know about uh, anatomy of the pancreas as well as its clinical importance.